Shad Everest. Greetings, I'm Shad, and in this video I want to discuss the most effective weapons for castle defense specifically. Now, this is going to be both fun and hopefully educational and insightful because I have done a lot of research over many years on many medieval weapons. In fact, I have a lot of individual dedicated videos on many of the weapons that will be coming up in this video. Things like, um, I don't know, uh, why did my brain just go dead then? I've got lots of, do so we have swords? We've got man catcher! I know the man catcher's coming up, we've got a dedicated video on that. We've got dedicated videos on certain pole arms, like the bill hook and things, and of course many swords things and, and everything. Uh, of course bows, cross, all, all, all those things. So if you wanted heaps of information on individual weapons, you can uh, have a look at those videos. But in this one, we're going to be looking at in a specific context, because uh, the effectiveness of a weapon is will be determined by what you want to use them for and what you want to achieve with them. I have a video discussing good and bad weapons and the uh, kind of understood objective uh, standard we apply to weapons to determine if one is going to be good or not and what it is is the how effective it achieves the purpose it's meant to be used for. And sometimes that purpose might change because subtle change because there's combat generally and we have already done a type of video here where we rank medieval weapons broadly for the battlefield but this analysis as I mentioned is for castle defense and I think it's going to be really interesting to see the the new tier the tier rating you know classic tier rating thing that you, you know people do it online all the all the young people the tier list videos we're doing it that style because we, we, we want to be hip and it's like, hello, fellow young people. We do this stuff too here. Swords. <laughs> I, I can do boomer so good. You know why? Because I am one. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but it's actually useful, okay? And it'll be really fun to compare wh where the weapons end up in this analysis. Because some weapons that would have been great on the battlefield might not be as good. And some that could have been, you know, really, really good could be terrible in this situation. Because castle defense is a whole different circumstance. So it's going to be fun. Going to go into it. And uh, we'll, we'll start right off the bat. So we have arming, sword, and shield. <sighs> Oh, this is interesting because, so for castle defense, one of the main situations we will be looking at is on the ramparts, okay? And also, real, well, for melee, it's the ramparts that you're going to be using melee weapons. Anywhere else, if you're in towers or, or, or internal rooms and stuff, and you have arrow loops or windows, um, or oh, matriculations. What if you're on the walls? M matriculations. We look, just because it's been a while. Okay, <clears throat> do you want to take out the headphone Oz? And say what? Just take just to see. Oh, oh, wait. Okay. No, no, no. I'm take my headphones off. <laughs> block my ears. Yeah, come, come, come years. It's been a while. Matriculations! Ah! All right, you did it. I, I know. I know. I'm just like this. Like, I feel. I, lo I love doing it too. I'm sorry. I, I did it for just you. Like a piece of meat I just feel it. like a piece of meat sometimes because you just want to see me do it. Okay. Yeah, make your uh, money, whore. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but you did, you bastard. Um, but no, yes, matriculations. Uh, and in those situations, melee weapons might actually be nearly as effective. And so because of that, arming sword and shield, like, okay, it's not going to be effective in every aspect of castle defense because there are areas in which you couldn't really use them effectively in defense. And then on the battlements, you would have your, your merlons and your crenelles and in between the crenelles, like in terms of reach and leverage, try and get over some of the um, battlements to strike. Because the other thing to consider is the way in which you'll be getting attacked and the context in which. So I'm going to, so even though we started with arming sword and shield. It's made me realize we need to cover a lot of bases in this is where they could be used, but also in what ways would you generally be attacked in a castle to then figure out the best way uh, um, certain weapons will be used. And we won't need to repeat this for every weapon. We'll set the kind of stand and then we can go faster into the other weapons as we get a good understanding. But one of the main ways in which people attack castles, but Oz has a constipated face like he wants to say something. Well, that's the thing. You just have to determine the fact that, like, so if, for example, a wall, mm -hmm. um, like being on the wall and also being on the tower and being on any other part, mm -hmm. what is the factor that is stopping it from being either good or making it good in that circumstance. Exactly. That's the part we're measuring, not the actual part itself. Yes, yes. And so one of the main ways in which castles will be attacked, and this is like 
when castles were built, one of the first ways in which they assailed, assaulted castles, was with Escalade, which is a fancy and more historically accurate term of saying, uh, ladders. You, you know, run up with ladders, and the whole, like, look, Lindy Beige has a brilliant video on Escalades. It's an absolutely great video. Uh, one of the misconceptions people have about ladders is, like, you put up a ladder against the um, battlements, and the defenders will grab the ladder and push it off. It's like, no, 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 they, they, people weren't stupid. What, the, you know the way to fix that? Just make it a little bit shorter so the ladder hits the wall just underneath the battlements, so they can't, if they want to try and push the ladder off, they'd have to reach out, expose themselves, and get killed. So, Escalade is the main one, and, uh, you know, you classic, I, I, I was gonna go to Battering Ram, but no, you know, what are the big ones? Like, yes, Siege Tower. Trebuchet. I reckon Arming Sword and Shield would be useful against people coming off out of Siege Tower, like, onto the battlements. Um, can't really do much against Trebuchet, so Escalade and Siege Towers are the big ones. But it's awkward to fight people with an army sword and shield with Escalade because you're limited in reach, you have to get a bit closer. The shield is a good thing, but oh, it wouldn't be terrible. I think that, so at the moment, hang on, there's S and S plus? Yes. I thought that was just, what? Well, the previous one just had A and then S class. Well, this basically well, is what you get for calling me retarded all these days. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Well, you see, Shad, last time we did this, she wanted special tiers. And I just realised... Wildcard, yes. Yeah, Wildcard. Mm -hmm. That is S+. Plus. So I've changed Wildcard to S+, plus, but I thought Wildcard was in the E category. If you want to, you can just change S+, plus to Wildcard. But what about E? I hang on, hang on. Wait, wait. Yeah. Okay, so can I just get rid of S+, plus? delete row? Yep. Yeah. Done! But can I change the colour of now S yeah. back to red? Okay, okay, see, you know, when, when you want competent help. <laughs> Nathan actually is a great employee, it's Oz that's incompetent. There's one thing we, thank you, one thing we forgot to add to that. What? Because it's, it's a siege, right? Mm -hmm. Indian space program. That's not necessarily a weapon for defence though, that's, you need to defend oh, against so it. So save that for the sieging. So, but I think an arming sword and shield, ooh, like, that's like a, like a catapult. So. The Indian Space Program is from the if you, recent video here on Shadowverse. You have a look. It's uh, we review some uh, one of the greatest epic war movies of all time, and uh, go watch that video, and you'll find out what the <laughs> Indian Space Program form of attack is. <laughs> uh, so I would actually uh, I'll pro maybe put it on B for now. Remember the context of these videos is that uh, I reserve the right to change my mind at any time. Okay, and uh, if there's another video that helps me recontextualize, where we put one. But I think arming sword and shield goes in B because it's not as effective as it was in. Actually, I think in the previous one, arming sword and shield went in B anyway. No, no, no. Arming sword by itself went in B, and arming sword and shield went in A, I think. But uh, it's the the leverage is an issue here to try and get people on the escalade and stuff. Um, it requires your enemy to get close to you. Yeah, it's a bit tricky. Uh, arming sword by itself. Ooh, actually, I was going to put Arming Sword by itself a bit lower because I was thinking you'd need to defend yourself against arrow fire, but on a castle, you have the battlements to defend yourself against arrow fire. It doesn't help. It doesn't hurt to have a shield, does it? I'm not sure. Maybe I could, yeah, I could. Ooh, it's tricky because if someone is on an escalade getting up a ladder and trying to hit you over the battlements, right, the battlement is still in between you. It's only when the, they get past the battlement, that's when you might want the shield. But so, still, if they're coming you know, I, look, yeah, yeah, um, I'll probably, I put it, see, it's, it's close though, it's much closer to Arming Sword and Shield than, say, the Battlefield situation. Alright, Badish, I think, needs to go in A, it's got reach, it's got leverage, you can just, coming up, someone's coming up on the escalator, on the ladders, and then on the other side of the battlement, you just, ah, oh, big swinging hit. Uh, Badish is definitely great. Battle Axe and Shield... Also, before we put Battle Axe and Shield on a higher tier than Arming Sword and Shield, but in this situation, I think it's more equivalent to Arming Sword because of the leverage problem that you run into. It's good against armor, but I think um, the thrusting capacity of Arming Sword and Shield would be really useful to try and get against the Escalade kind of things. And another thing about um, Castle Defense is good chances that you're going to be much closer to your companions, and so a thrust is an easier, more controlled attack when you're surrounded by your, you know, allies, then why, like, you, you couldn't really do wide yeah, sideways over swings. The top and down. You could over the top, but then you have the leverage problem and reach. Mm. Okay, because yeah, because remember the battlements are in the way. You can't get super close now because they're going to be on the escalator on the, on the ladders. Um, 
Remember, part of the, one of the purposes of this video is for discussion. If you think I get something wrong, share in the comments below where you think certain weapons will go. Battle axe by itself, all right, about the same as having Bec de Corbin. Bec de Corbin. Bec de Corbin. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, yep, A class. Um, bees. Who added bees? Not the bees. <laughs> no, not the bees. Um, hmm. They're this, like, are they bees? But, but what, is it a beehive with lots of bees in it? Yeah. That you could throw? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, that actually might have some uses. Like, like a swarm, especially if they're aggressive, right? Um, I'm, but that's a wild card one. It could be really useful in an ultra specific situation. Like you see the, um, the, the uh, siege tower coming towards you. And if you can lob somehow into the siege tower or the roof or something, or down onto the swarm. Oh, like if there is, if they're swarming at the, um, at the uh, wall, castle wall's base, right? And they need to get all swarming around the ladder to get up the ladder, and you just lobbed a, a beehive of aggressive bees right down on top of them through matriculation or something. My, uh, my mate tried making his own honey the other day, and no matter mm. how finely he ground the bees, it tasted awful. Yeah. We're just moving on. Uh, bill hook. Yeah, it's in A. Like, a lot of the pole arms are going to be pretty close equivalents. I mean, all right, let's really consider this. It's got great axe chopping capacity. That's part of the bill hook. Uh, the hook actually could be really useful. Actually, the... Ooh, hmm. Hooking ability could elevate one of these weapons. Because, all right, picture, you're on a castle wall. Okay, you have the battlements, merlons, crenelles, right there. Okay, so these are the crenellations. And someone has come up on an escalade, you can't see the ladder, but they're on the top of the ladder and they get there and they're trying to swing whatever weapon at you, all right? And you have a bill, you got slap aside, but if they were a little bit to the side, right? Imagine if you hit them, got a hook, and just yanked them sideways off that ladder. That's very specific, but if you can do it, why not? It adds further versatility to the weapon on top of thrusting, because bill hooks can thrust and chopping. Um, I actually, ooh, this elevates it to the highest in A class, maybe S class. If you can actually pin them to where they are on the ladder, then they can't have their mates um, behind them. So, you couldn't do that with a bill hook, though. Well, you could hold them in place by the neck uh, or something. Well, we'll get to a weapon that can do that, but I, because the thing is, the Bechtel Corbin could do that as well. The spike is a hooking thing. You could hook people with the spike. So, this is more than just chopping. See, the, the Bardiche uh, doesn't have hooking capacity, it's a main chopper. Uh, and so, at the very least, I would put any hooking capable pole arm on a higher level, in the, maybe the highest level of A tier and then the body is near. But for the now, we're going to put them in S tier because that's, that makes these weapons particularly awesome. Oh, actually, the problem with pole arms, um, uh, they're big, hard to wield and move around with lots of men beside you and around and things. Uh I disagree though. It depends on the size of the battle of the rampart, really. But think about uh, but I mean, shield formations. They're designed to be. Yeah, I mean, if you if you if you're conscious of it and you do and you you're thrusting forward and you can do hook things and okay, I I think you could work around the the um, limitation that the size, the length of the weapon could cause issues with. So yeah, okay, uh, we'll leave it there. Boiling oil. So, okay, so you know why I'm putting it. Oh, I'm going to put it in wildcard because they rarely use boiling oil. It was an expensive resource. There was a much more affordable resource you could use to throw down on enemies. But if you had nothing else and only boiling oil and you heated it up, it would be ooh, vicious. But it's one of those ultra specific uses that you can't use it generally in combat. It can, like, once you throw it, it's gone and you can't follow up attack. And so it's definitely a wildcard. Bullwhip. Nah, um, look, I was, all right, here's my thought. I'll, uh, first I thought definitely F tier, but then I thought, well, hang on. Usually this is a crap weapon because it, like bull whips are, you know, the only place you can do really good, like, when it's actually not really good damage. It can't chop people's heads off and be incapacitated, but it can hurt a hell of a lot. It's not right at the tip. So already these are pretty crap weapons in their ability to offend people. Uh, their range is really restricted by the length of the thing. But then I thought, 
you could actually wrap, like actually try and whap, whip it around people to tie up and then yank. Is that going to work though? I don't think, it, I, first I thought maybe, but then when I really considered it, it would be too awkward to pull off. Yeah, like, uh, 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 yeah exactly. And I saw it would be so ultra unlikely to actually pull that off. You'd have to get so, like, yeah, it's a crap, it's F tier. It'd be very, very useful if you were besieged by bulls. Maybe, maybe. Cows have guns. What, what about bullhead? Oh, no, that's pig, pig headed men. I was like, bull headed? Like, is it, what's a phrase of something that's, yeah, call someone that's related to being bullet? Bull, what if they're bullish? I don't, I don't know. Bullish? No, bullish. You bullish would, is you, a. You, you would need to be bullish if you were going to siege a castle. Yeah. 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 Or you could be a bit of a bull. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all chamber pots. We'll consider chamber pots. Fine, uh, fine. Um, poo and and urine thrown on someone. You know, if you're committed to the attack, you're not going to care about a bit of poo. Dude, if I'm fighting in a siege and crap like, falls on me, I'm pissed. Well, no pun intended. It, it happened on the battlefield where people would urinate their pants. And if you're in heavy armor on the throes of a battle, uh, you can't really get out of the armor. Uh, I think Knight Errant um, uh, did a video on this that you would just have to soil yourself. And because what, you're gonna just stop, stop, I need a crap, just hang on. <laughs> Drop your tax in the middle of the fight. Well, shiv the chivalric code. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You, you, know, you just have to do it. And look, credit where credit's due. Brandon Sanderson mentions this with regards to Shardplate in his Stormlight Archive series, where <laughs> the prince of the nation, this great warrior, um, is trying to impress a woman, and she's a bit snarky and cheeky. And she's like, how do you poop? And he's like, well, hang on, what? He was trying to d d describe this great battle. He's like, how do you poop? In your armor, in the battle. And, and Brandon, he's obviously done some research on this because the reference point is actually medieval armor. And uh, he gives the real thing and he's like, I, Adolin, heir of the house of so-and-so and all this stuff, have personally crapped myself in the battlefield. And at that point... It More than once. <laughs> at that point, it becomes shark played. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, so, this is the thing. When it comes to battle and poo... You just had to work through it sometimes, literally, because the siege of Castle uh, um, Gila. Uh, it's, it'll be Chateau Gia. Gia. Um, uh, great castle. Like I've done, I've referenced it a number of times, like a uh, medieval siege video. I've referenced it because uh, you, you learn a lot about how that castle was sieged. It was built right by Richard the Lionheart when he actually controlled some regions in France and then was besieged by the French and overtaken. And you know, one of the ways it had multiple. Um, Enclosures like um, baileys and uh, like walls. It's like this uh, incredible. So they technically have like three separate baileys, and for them to break into, they got past the first bailey to get in the second bailey. Uh, one of the accounts is um, uh, one they either broke through a church or broke into that this section of the castle through a privy or toilet or, or a garderobe if, uh, for a castle uh, where they literally had to deal with crap <laughs> and. They would do it, okay? Uh, some say that it well, couldn't be a castle because that would be sacrilege, but at the same time, the pragmatists, sometimes they would commit a bit of sacrilege just to win a battle. What are you laughing at, Oz? <laughs> the loathsome dung you do. <laughs> <laughs> He wouldn't eat it, but they have to deal with poo sometimes. It's just life. I, I'm a father. I've had to deal directly with lots of poo. You've put up with my crap for a long time. I know. Gosh, and changing Oz's nappy is just awful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything to play with. That is, oh, that's the wrong visual image. Please don't ever say anything like that again. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up and move on to the next thing, I'm just, I'm just picturing Oz oh! wearing nothing better than that for you. No! Move on, Alright, well, Chamber Pot, Chamber Pot. Uh, 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 Wild card, because if someone gets a card, it gets a card. No, no, like, it's F. It, like, it, even... Even in ultra situ like specific situation, it wouldn't stop him. It's a it's a F class weapon. It's pretty pretty useless. F like you get more you would get more you get more use out of actually throwing the chamber pot to try and knock someone out than what's in the pot. So it's a pretty crappy weapon. All it's right. a pretty crappy weapon. All right. <laughs> Clubs. So, hmm, what size of club? See. Club, if I, if I was to consider this a large two-handed club, okay, um, I would put it in B. Like, like, it would have more reach than an arming sword or battle axe. It would be better against armor. And 
most of these guys that have any brains do it, trying to sail this castle will be wearing a helmet, okay? That battle axe, somewhat okay against helmet. Arming sword, horrible against helmet, but a club, that'll, you'll knock someone out through a helmet with a yeah. good, and if it's a big, I'm talking about, big, this is the context of big two handed clubs, granted, okay? And it's a stick. It's a big old stick. Stick good. Stick very good. Oh, crossbow, crossbows. All right, this is where crossbows shine. This is where they really, really shine. Uh, one of the big limitations of crossbow is the rate of fire, the amount of time it takes to reload. But the castle defense gives you a perfect situation where, where you can just duck behind the battlement, reload, you're protected, you're not vulnerable. They're not gonna get in a, a different angle to actually hit you unless they, I, very rarely if they could. Uh, and so crossbow is ST, because not only that, if you, if you have peasants or, uh, or servants in the castle, you can just give them a crossbow and they will still be lethal. In actual fact, one of the uh, room, like, eh, we don't know if this is accurate or not, but the way in which Richard the Lionheart was killed, supposedly, was by a cook, a servant of the castle that was besieging with a crossbow. Not trained in warfare or anything, just this random guy in a crossbow. And there are two accounts of what actually happened because they did eventually get the castle, right? And so one account is that um, on his deathbed, Richard asks for the person that, you know, loosed the arrow that he's now dying from, loosed the bolt that he's dying from, and it was this, you know, cook. Yeah, and I, I think it was a young guy. They bring him forward, and uh, and Richard kind of, like, compliments him. This is the whole noble, glorious Richard. That's one account. The other account is that um, they bring him to him, and then he was brutally tortured to death <laughs> for killing the king. It's kind of one or other extreme. <laughs> Maybe they did both. It's like, good job, now come over here. You skin him. <laughs> Flail, draw and quarter. Uh, but even in the hands of an untrained person, a crossbow is a deadly weapon, especially in a siege scenario. And it overcomes a lot of the limitations. So crossbow is S tier. Gee, uh, part of me almost, want, you know, we might need the S plus tier again. <laughs> or we could take them all down one um, to get, because I think a crossbow, it ha it's ranged. And so it's effective against um, people at the bottom of the castle, you, that you don't need to have to wait for them to get close to you. And so, like, all right, let's let's uh, let's recontextualize. To save us just chucking in another tier completely, let's recontextualize this, because a crossbow is better like in a, almost like an order of magnitude than the Beck de Corbin or Bill Hook, because it is one of the main defensive weapons you would be using in a castle siege. You can hit people at range, hit people on the um, siege tower, hit them on the escalade and uh, like on the, on the ladders. And even if the ladders in front of you, you can still try and shoot and get back and reload. But one of the ways castles were designed, I've met multiple videos on this, was to give you multiple angles of fire to hit the people. And so you would have a wall, but oftentimes before when before the wall would curve too much, they would have a, a half tower, a full tower or something like that. that and by the tower, uh, the, the shape of the tower, if it was square or round, would push half of it further out than the line of the wall. And these people going up on the ladders, right? If you're on a tower back here, you could shoot sideways right down into them. Castles are designed as, so and you see this all historically. And sometimes if the if the if that tower was in line with the wall, it's called a bastion. If it was higher, it could be either a full tower. If it was a half tower, it was a half tower. Funny, that makes sense. Um, what were those wooden things that would peek over? And hoardings. hoardings, yep. Um, and so these would be really useful uh, in hoardings and machicolations. And uh, I, yeah, crossbows are like just definitely S tier weapons for castle defense. And uh, you could utilize many of the advantages in which castles were designed. And like, imagine that just shooting sideways at these people going up the ladders and everything. It was so satisfying to kill human beings. <laughs> so daggers. Daggers we put into wild card in the battlefield because that would be one of the like great uses with a dagger is like pinning people in armor and everything. I actually don't think that would be a great you'd be able to do that often with a castle defense. Like if the range would be horrible, horrible with that. Yeah. Um, and it's vastly worse than arming sword and battle axe. 
and it's does, it doesn't have the wild card advantage because you don't have opportunity to pin these people in these narrow um, uh, ramparts on the castle and uh, you, you want to knock them off the, the ladders and the siege towers before they even get there and you can't do range. Gosh, dagger is an F tier weapon in this well, scenario. What, what if someone with armor comes up a ladder? Hit them with a heavy club or a heavy poleaxe. You got range, like, you know, you just go for that option instead. Um, uh, yeah. So Danax, definitely with a Bardish, they're very equivalent weapons. Decapitated heads. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the guys who did make it over the wall. So, okay, okay, let's, let's actually break this down then. Some people come up, you eat, oh look, you either have decapitated heads from the peasants that you were oppressing beforehand, or the soldiers that weren't performing up to snuff, or the wives that you just wanted to divorce but you were legally unallowed to do. You could have those ready to go, or, you could get some decapitated heads from the people who got too high up, and somehow you can, and they have them to, so they're good. They're ready to go. You, you they, 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 it's a bit rock-like. You could throw them onto people, and some people have particularly thick skulls. Yes, like Oz, we that was hanging there. We know it was there. You knew I was going to go there, um, and uh, and. Uh, <laughs> I'm just big bone. <laughs> You know that's the polite way of people trying to avoid saying you're fat. I understand that. Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. okay, I've okay. heard it quite good, good. <laughs> um, But look, in actual, if we're being serious, there wouldn't be a lot of weight. They get some range. Well, think um, about the, the shock factor. A human head's just been thrown at you. There is the shock factor. Do you reckon what? The demoralization isn't a guarantee, though. If these are hardened soldiers. No. If heads are dropping from the sky, you can bet I'm pretty demoralised. Ah, uh, look, I still think... It's, it's not as good as a sword or battle axe. Look, maybe. I'm not saying you're fighting ISIS. So you think, you think wild cards, if there's a chair... Yeah. Wild card, if there's a chance that it could demoralise an army by throwing heads of their own al friends and stuff at them, especially as the king. If it was the leader of their army and you threw their head at them, maybe, maybe. His stock... Or, look, range, not good cu uh, thrust, uh, cutting capacity, great thrusting capacity, but I, I, I think, you know, give it a, put it in D. Executioner sword. That one's a great cutting capacity, more range, uh, and yes, I do have a dedicated video on executioner sword. Um, not good thrusting. The thrusting, and look, they're very unwieldy. They're, they weren't made to be solid weapons, and so... But you'll get some choppy, choppy out of it. However, you can use them to make the decapitated heads. That's right. That is correct. <laughs> Feral cats. Yeah, we <laughs> thought that would fit in there. Uh, <laughs> I'm just look. A feral cat can be a very dangerous thing to deal with. I understand, but if you're wearing armor, they can't do much. I'm sorry, they're, they're pretty useless against armor, and a lot of people assaulting cars will be wearing armor. Oh, I'm sorry, Shad, cats are more liquid than the boiling oil. They'll find a way into the armor. No, no, look, I, unfortunately, I'm just, I just don't see it. Just don't see it. Fists. We actually gave fists a bit more credit in Battlefield because of their grappling capacity. You don't want to try and be grappling people coming up ladders where you have to... You need to knock them off, kill them quickly and things. And so I don't think fists, especially punching... Yeah, they're not as good. You don't think you could, you know, successfully fist another night? <laughs> that would be... Tell you what, that would be demoralizing. <laughs> Seeing your king fist. <laughs> Gosh, why do I keep you around? <laughs> so, let's moving on from that. We have an interesting one: the flail. I'm not a fan of the flail, and I can't. Where did we put the flail last time, um, Nathan? Could you quickly look that up? Because here is one of the few situations in which I would actually give the flail a little bit more uh, effectiveness. What is D tier? We did put it on D tier, so. One of the big things that people were doing in a, a castle assault, they would be shields are a big one. And like, like, especially going up the uh, those ladders, you want the shield to defend. Um, uh, oh, they're, 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 like, if you're wearing full armor, you could get away with not wearing a shield. But a flail, one of the redeeming things about the flail is the fact that once it hits, it can curve over shields and still land a solid hit. 
it, that's much easier to negate if you have room to move and to deflect and, and stuff. You can't move on a ladder. You're, you're fixed. So your range of motion is much worse. And so because of that, utilizing the flail's ability to actually wrap around a shield and hit, it's not bad. It's actually got a little bit more. So I look, to show I'm actually not wholly biased in every regard, I would put the flail up to C tier above sword and axe. Holy crap, would a flail be more effective in the castle seat? Let's really consider this, okay? You would have to be careful of people around you. That's one of the failings of a flail is its ability to redirect, but so you wouldn't be able to do really side hits, but you could kind of control the chain and flip. But the problem is hitting people behind you and you would, be, there, there's a chance, a much higher chance you could actually hit people behind you because it'd be a close packed area on that rampart. Uh, so if, if you're having to restrict the way that you try and swing and you can't get a full swing because so many people, mm, it's not terrible still, but that's a, that's a limitating fact. I think because of the fail. Look, you could, if you th don't think that that's a problem, I would agree then it can go into C tier because it has a unique benefit. Um, I'm not sure about the wrapping around grappling ability to pull people off. It doesn't have the reach for that um, to really get advantage. So I'm happy to still be on the fence about there, but at the moment, because I can't think of a way to really resolve the problem with being so close to your allies, I'll put it in D again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> French insults. Now, having heard some scathing French insults, it is very clear they have the capacity to wholly demoralize an enemy. You look like an overfed god. Exactly. You know, I got the elderberry one. I've had the elderberry one slung at me, and that hurt. That Your cut deep. Take their shortcuts to school. <laughs> and it's just the accent makes it so much worse. It makes it feel more mocking against you, like, ho, 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 what are you looking at, you, you English pig dog? <laughs> Your I'll cheese be English. is weak. And even against another Frenchman, they're like, so this is definitely a wild card. I, definitely a wild card. Gauntlet sword. So one of the problems with the gauntlet sword is this range of motion. Again, I've done a video on it. And uh, and you need to kind of redirect and that would have a higher chance of hitting, the hitting other people. So the gauntlet sword would be a uniquely problematic weapon to use on a, so it's definitely lower than regular sword, which means that it put, gets put in F. Glaive, good solid chopper. Goes with the uh, other choppy choppies. The Godden Dag. It's a club, but better. So because of that, it go, it's got thrusting capacity as well. So that goes in with B tier. You know that's in Elden Ring, by the way. The Godden Dag? I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I went through all the weapons. There's tons of weapons. Right, weapons. that's cool. Yeah. I, I love Elden Ring. People think I don't because I've dared criticize just a, a thing here there or two. No, but it's a great game. I love it. In, in Elden Ring, it's called the Club Spear. The Club Spear Club. I just call it what it is. Well, they're Japanese, Chad. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, great swords. So... Man, you, like big problem with greatsword is again room to swing the thing around. That makes it you could get a thrust out of it, but oof, oof. Think that'd be great. You'd think that'd be great. It's at least in D tier. It's better than daggers and bull whips and things. So and uh, and gauntlet sword, you can still get it on angles to thrust and and not hit your opponent. So it's not as cumbersome as gauntlet sword because the the angle of the sword is fixed onto your forearm. And so yeah, I think a, a fair place to put it is in D. Halberd, it, it, it's a choppy chopper, but with hooking capacity, it goes in A. That's an A class. Warhammer, reach problems. It has reach problems like the uh, battle axe and arming sword. And so I think that goes in D. Katana, this is two handed, it's a little longer. You can cut through anything, Shad. Right? <laughs> um, uh, look, interestingly enough, we actually had like Longsword on a separate level to Arming Sword, and I, I know Katana was as well on the previous one, um, because 
the, the reach that you get and the, the leverage and the speed that you can then utilize is really useful in like, you know, uh, combat where you can move around. But a lot of that gets nullified because of the close confines of a castle. Uh, and because of that, I would say it's about as, as equally effective, which is an interesting thing. And that means longsword. Usually longsword is better against armor and things. But in this situation, I would put them about equivalently. And it's on D tier. That's pretty low. Like, whew. But it is what it is, like, because you don't have a shield, you want a shield to put it there, so, you know, it's interesting. I feel I'm being fair and honest here about a lot of this. I'm trying trying to put aside my biases here. Longbow. Oh, so, it is clearly one of the best. But, is it as good as crossbows in a castle defense? No, it's not. You know what? It's a... what. Well, we're talking about longbow here. This is a big bow. And some of the uh, corners you have to navigate is very are very narrow and the angles that you need to go. And so the other thing is, right, castle walls are thick, usually at least a meter, if not thicker. And so to make not only windows, but arrow loops, you need to make an alcove. And those alcoves are usually about this big and then they get sunk into the wall to the part to a portion of the wall is about this thick and that's where they put the arrow loop on. And so there's that thick and then the alcove lets you get close enough to that portion in the thicker wall. What also that creates though, you have about this much room, sometimes shorter, to maneuver side to side. And if you have a bow, one, the alcoves are usually shorter, and so if you want to actually raise the bow to proper height and it's a long bow, you can hit the top of the alcove. These would be really awkward to maneuver, more than I think people realize. You could get away with using them easier on uh, the ramparts, the outside ramparts, and that's why... So, by the way, vertical arrow loops, usually for bows, right? And uh, horizontal arrow loops are for crossbows, but some, a lot of them had both, had a vertical and horizontal, that's why they were made for crosses. Um, but also, actually, vertical ones are for crossbows as well, so you can angle it out of the things. But a crossbow you can maneuver much better in a castle than a bow. And so... It's great, it's one of the best ones, but I would actually put it on different tier. I, I would consider crossbows better in certain circumstances than bows. You need the training for a bow, you don't need the training for a crossbow. Uh, the rate of fire is uh, kind of nullified. Granted, you know, you would, you would lose more arrows with five bowmen than you would five crossbowmen, but if you had 10 crossbowmen versus five bowmen, you could kind of try and balance it out. Bow, crossbows are more expensive than bows. It's close. It's close. I'm almost convincing myself to put longbow in A tier, but... But if you had either weapon, one is better, clearly. If you had someone to help reload, like a, like a young guy who isn't really ready to do the fighting or shooting and stuff, but could load for you, like shoot, hand load, he hands you a loaded one, shoot, and like, you know? So I, at the moment, I think crossbow has more advantages than longbow, but bows aren't out of the game yet. Okay? They're not out of the game yet. Maces... Range. They have, a, they have a problem with reach. Sure, they'd be up there with club, though, wouldn't they? Well, cl clubs we can consider much longer. Uh, there's medieval art that depict clubs, and they're usually really long things. They're short ones but that are mace length, but they're long ones. Maces are more stereotypically short because they're really heavy. Uh, th that's the whole point. They have a heavy head end. And I think there are some examples of two-handed maces, but they're not common at all. And so, yeah. oh, the man catcher. Yes. Dude. Yes. Single women love that weapon. <laughs> the man catcher is like a weapon perfectly, purely designed for uh, not only, but excels in castle defense. In actual fact, uh, castle Hohostefish? I forget how to pronounce it. I forget the second half of the name. I've referenced it a lot because it has like 13 gatehouses. But great, beautiful castle, right? And it's actually, it's a really interesting case study where sometimes castles, their internal buildings can just look like normal regular buildings. Um, uh, but if you put a wall around defenses, it's a castle. And so the keeps don't need to be really impressive and amazing. Hohostevitz, I think. Did I get it right that time? Uh, but in, they, they have like, you know, old armories in these castles and in that castle, they have like man catchers. So these are specifically made for castle fence. They don't have range though. Uh, they don't, they're on big sticks. They're on big sticks, but they, they can't shoot over range uh, people, people oh. down at the bottom. But we put it in wildcard before because of the ultra specific circumstances in which they're useful, but this is the ultra specific circumstance. So I think this doesn't deserve to go on wildcard. This deserves to go all the way up into A tier. And the only reason I'm not putting it in S tier is because 
it is not long, long range. You can't shoot people at the base of the castle or at, you know, approaching the castle and things. But it, like, th think about someone coming up on a ladder, right? And one, your ability to knock aside weapons, you can still defend, you can still hit people with the thing, knock them on the head, right? As soon as you get that thing locked around someone's neck, holy crap, you got, it's got spikes on it, right? That would be so vicious. You'd kill them, but you can also lock them in place and hold them to block people coming up. You, like, even if you kill them and you're like, because of the spikes on the neck, you literally hold them on the ladder, so they're just limping around there, blocking people from getting... That's a pretty, like, horrifying but useful thing, because all the other weapons... Even the hook ones where you pull them aside is to pull them off and they fall. No other weapon would be capable of locking someone in place at such a range in which you could still keep yourself... Because it's long. You would keep yourself safe from a lot of weapons trying to hit you. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So yeah, man catcher, definitely A tier. Maul? See, the maul is more like the two-handed mace. This is where we get to longer ones, and I would put that with club. Yeah. Falchion messes? I put it in the uh, uh, same length as arming sword and stuff. Nunchucks. Is there, is there, for this one, is there like one below uh, F tier? For... You can just not put it in the list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is definitely F tier. Because, uh, uh, look, Gauntlet Sword would be more effective than Nunchucks. Uh, they don't get the advantage of what I was saying about the flails because their ability to wrap around is in a fixed point. The good thing about the flail is regardless of where it hits on the chain, it has ability to wrap around. The Nunchucks suck because there are so many ways to incapacitate the swing from a defensive standpoint and they, there's issues with power generation and training and so many things. Well, it just also goes to show that the Nunchucks are of, on the same value as a chamber pot full of shit. <laughs> um, frying pan <coughs> bludgeoning ability the range is even shorter than a regular sword I'll tell you what though that cook didn't kill the lion heart with a frying pan it's true it's true I, I, I'd almost put it in lowest end of D tier or F what do you think I can't decide well, no, think about this right weapons things that are useful in a castle siege you need to cook food wild card Mm, you reckon wild card? wild card? Okay, we'll put it in wild card. The partisan. It's a spear with some chopping capacity. I think you got the wrong picture though. This isn't a stereotypical partisan. So who got this picture? This is Nathan's fault. No, this is Oz's fault because I did what Oz already had done. So. So we're both to blame. Sorry, it's both of your fault. Fine. Uh, so a partisan stereotypically is a more choppy type of spear with like a blade end that big. You wouldn't really go as far to call it a sword spear, but it's approaching that range uh, with usually wings type that are kind of cross guard, kind of spikes. Um, <coughs> this is that one's more like I don't know. So there's like a parrying dagger on the end of the thing. It could still qualify. As, it's not a stereotypical partisan, but it doesn't have the choppy choppy. It has the stabby stabby. But it doesn't have the hooky hooky. And so it's the B. Those are the technical terms, by the way. Um, so I'm retarded. <laughs> if it, people understand what I'm saying, it's perfectly effective <laughs> use of language. <laughs> Let's shut up! <laughs> Oz is the expert on retardation, he would know. I am. Uh, pikes, I would put their long. Oh, actually, ooh. Pikes are stereotypically much longer than a regular spear and that would make them unwieldy really unwieldy because if the point of the pike is further than you can't pull it back enough to get to hit the person that's on there the ladder it might actually nullify the utility of a pike completely because this isn't just a regular spear and if you're going to hit around knock and you can't and you have to like move it down so you have a big end pulling out that way just to get the spearhead close enough to actually be able to strike someone, I think a pike is a bad weapon in a siege. Yeah, I think that's F tier. Pitchfork. You know, it's not, it doesn't, maybe more. Like, it, it could hook a bit and pull, okay. right? But the, real but, is, um, step, what? the real question is, why do you have any peasants in the bloody castle still? Get them out of there. You should use them for human so, ammo. So, usually they would um, expel the staff and non-fighting members of the castle before the siege happened. But if the siege started before they could get free, they could get trapped in the castle. Sometimes they were still expelled. This happened in the siege of Chateau Goy Gia. Um, uh, and uh, a lot of the, well, actually some were expelled, but a lot of the villagers um, uh, escaped to the castle, were let in the castle, but they were eating, eating too much food and they were expelled from the castle. And then 
um, uh, the French who were besieging it shot upon them. So this is a heartbreaking thing. And so they had to try and run back to the castle, but the castle defenders wouldn't let them back in. And if they tried to get in, they'd shoot on them back. And so these hot, poor, like these poor villagers were trapped in between two armies and they couldn't escape and they starved to death. It's horrifying stuff. Polax, it, 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 look, a lot of choppy choppy. A lot of hammer, ha, ha, hammy, hammy. <laughs> okay, wacky, all right. Wacky. wacky, wacky, maybe, yes. Like, stabby, stabby, but no hooky, hooky. So it goes in B. Hooky, hooky sounds like a... <laughs> Again, <laughs> the, like... these are the technical terms. Quarter staff. Oh, uh, you know, you know, C. It's, it's not what? overly long. It's on the same thing as clubs? It is. It's <laughs> Actually, a quarter staff doesn't have as much punch as a heavy club. You're right. You're right. Um, okay, fine, fine. I will, I will, I will. Uh, dagger and rapier. So rapiers, interestingly enough, are usually said to be really good against armor because you get in the gaps. There's actually, that's not as, like, it's not as uh, blanketly applicable as people might think because getting into gaps sometimes is really hard and by the blade being so thin, it could have a chance to flex. That's why people are half sorted to get in the gaps. Um, and uh, it, like, that, which means it's not as easy to get in the gaps as say as an arming sword if you need a half sword to actually aim properly. And it would be as uniquely ineffective as a lot of other types of swords. The rapier was more as a, a sword for self-defense, not warfare, even though, it was used in warfare, but that was actually in times when people were wearing less armor as well. It's a renaissance weapon. Um, and so people were still wearing armor, but not fully covering. So I would actually, you know, it's it's it's, it's not as effective, I would say, as an army sword in a battle because the choppy capacity and blunt force is less, but at more range, the dagger, it's hard. It's on the lower end of D. I would put it on the lower end of D. And a rapier by itself, Lower than that, still. <laughs> yeah, but the, I was almost discounting the dagger because the dagger is useless. The dagger is in F tier. I feel like a dagger makes it like just get rid of the rapier and have the dagger for when they come over the wall. You reckon? Maybe they should both go. It's a, look, if we're wrong, let us know in the comments, okay? We'll put them both there. Rocks! Dude. Rocks! So, rocks are actually really good in sieges. Why do you have machiculations? Machiculations translate to something like neck crushes or head crushes, okay? Um, you know why? Because of the rocks they threw through. They're anything heavy. Dude, in a siege, those things rock. They, they, they do. They do. I will, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. All right, so this is the thing. It's not really useful in many other situations. Like uh, people coming up on the ladders, you could rock throw it at people, but that's going to not be any better than other weapons. It, it's a wild card. Their use is very specific, but useful in that specific thing. Uh, and so, yeah, because the man catcher is useful in more situations where the rocks is more specific. Uh, Saber, scimitar, you know, I'll, I'll give it, it's, it's the same as like, you know, reach uh, and issues with the other swords. Look, scythe. Hooky hooky. This isn't a war scythe. This is a regular farming scythe. And the hooky hooky would be more awkward. Mm. More awkward. So I think this is an F tier. Short bow, okay, okay. You remember how I said bows are gonna come back? Yeah. A short bow is a compact bow and they can come in shockingly heavy draw weights, like, you know, warfare tier draw weights. And a short bow could be maneuvered much easier in castle confines and definitely S tier. Mm. S tier. I would use a short bow in castle defense over a long bow. Um, uh, and they can be just high ranges. The Spanish Inquisition. No one expects them. I wasn't expecting that here, I, I fully admit. Um, and look, if, if they just appeared unexpected in a siege, and it's the Spanish Inquisition. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you, gonna do? What are you so look, this is a wild card. Sometimes they could just stop all, everything, and then other times, all well, it is the Spanish, so yeah. who cares? So it, it's a wild card. It's ammunition. Yeah. Spanish. Spear. All right. So spear is many. It's stabby stabby. It doesn't have the choppy choppy, but it's got the stabby stabby. And the, I would still put it in B. I'd still put it in B. I think the range it makes it I lower end of, say, um, some others, like the Polax has stabby stabby and choppy choppy and hitty hitty. Mm. Wacky wacky. Sorry. I got it wrong. Right. wrong. The technical terms. Um, but... The spear has the range to really stab at people when they're on the other side of those battlements, which still makes it like better than all. But still, I mean, Sword and Shield got the shield. I think 
I think, yeah, actually C. It's still good, okay? Not It's better than Arming Sword, but the shield and Arming Sword makes it about a more equivalent thing. And, uh, oh, look, I, I, I put it back in B, okay? Spear is great. Sword Breaker. Oh. Um, it's a great weapon for dueling, but you're not really dueling. You, you need to knock people off those ladders and siege towers and hitting them at range. And so I think, unfortunately, it's in F. It's in F with, with regular dagger. Sword Staff. Oh, I love the Sword Staff. It's, cool. but it's got Stabby. It's got Cutty. It's got, yeah, yeah, it's got Cutty and uh, yeah, Chop, Choppy, bit of, bit of Choppy. Um, and the range, you know, I think it's up there with um, the other Choppy Choppies. It doesn't have Hooky Hooky. So, throwing knives. What a topical, uh, <laughs> yeah, we've talked about throwing knives recently, and uh, and yes, uh, if this video is coming out, because I've already filmed it, but I might, but yes, I know of the response video, and I have responded in kind, uh, acknowledging it, thanking him for you know, continuing the discussion, and if uh, that video is already out, you can check it out. But if it's not, you can look forward to it. Um, but throwing knives. The, if this video is coming out before the throwing knives, you might get an idea about what I was considering or what my response is to some of the arguments. I, I tried to do that. My mouth was too dry. I tried to go... There, that's the, That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to go... I was trying to grab it and go... And drop like that, but... Do you want to just retake it and do it? <laughs> do it proper? Just water? No, no, I've lost. I've lost the moment. <laughs> He's flat now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, serious one now. Velociraptors. Okay, not like you think you don't expect the Spanish Inquisition. What about something that's been? I would not expect Velociraptors. Now, is, are these are these Jurassic Park Velociraptors or the more? Is, I know there might be exceptions. I haven't actually looked into too much, but I've heard that proper sized Velociraptors are about the size of a chicken. No, the Jurassic Park was completely accurate. God, must Life. be. Must uh, be. Uh, all right, all right. Way. Let's be let's be fair here. We'll pretend that these ones that we are not expecting are the Jurassic Park ones. And if you, okay, I think they just get in the way. They've got big tails. They'd move around. They'd be cumbersome. Um, I, they, they wouldn't work well on ramparts. I'm sorry. Them over the walls. They would probably break their legs when they land and die. They'd be pissed when they landed. <laughs> but if they survived. Okay, they're clever girls though. Just open up the gates, let them out. Uh, They'd love it. They'd have a field day. If you could get them out of the castle without issue, you just go to town. They're like, you know what annoys me in Jurassic Park? What? Is how difficult they actually depict dealing with these dinosaurs are. Get a freaking shotgun or, or anything with a high caliber, dead. Someone All right? tried that. They, they, that was a clever girl. Like, no, no. They, they're like, they, they make them vastly more difficult to kill than they are. Look, look. Life, look life. at how easily the Marines dealt with the aliens when they finally had actual guns against them. They didn't deal with them. They all got killed. But they killed a lot when they, before they got taken I mean, down. The platoon, there was like four dudes left. Yeah, but they took down a lot with them and they're aliens. What, what's their actual name? The, um, Xenomorphs. They're Xenomorphs with... Acid, blood, and crap, and they took down a lot with them. Shad, every single one except three, three people died. Like there was three left. I'm just saying, a guy in armor with a really sharp sword. If the xenomorphs didn't have acid armor or they armor, they have acid blood. That's too. And and they have armor plated they kind of thing. Oh, okay, yes, yeah, uh, xenom yeah, okay. xenomorphs have armor plated, but raptors don't. Okay, raptors. and I don't think a raptor could bite through hard and steel full plate. Absolutely it could. No. Do you have any idea how strong the jaw is? We, we, all right, someone who has experience with Velociraptors probably raised them, fought them a bit. Let us know in the comments if they can bite through armor. Yeah, like, Chris Pratt, yeah, we want you Like, to let us know, because I, I'm pressing F to doubt. I don't think they could. Okay. I think they're overhyped. And get, get a friggin' pole axe against a raptor and you're in armor, kill it in one swing. They, they're they, overhyped they so just hard. for you know, the suspense of the film, when in actual fact, a lot of these dinosaurs would be vastly easier to kill than they're depicted. There's a reason why they went extinct. But they work in, in, in squads, in packs. They're uh, smart. I don't care, I don't care. It's, it's, it's in F, done. Life, life done. Done. They're, they're worse than the Spanish Inquisition, even. No, <laughs> yep. Not the blast they're out. done. War darts. Again, we need to specify what type of war darts, but if we're going with the plum butter, Range, but not as good as um, bow and crossbow, but you know, thrown, not as good, like, uh, I'm thinking, I'm feeling D, I'm feeling D with war darts, because range is useful, down at the enemies. War pick, one-handed, because um, we already have the Bechter Corbin, 
Um, uh, if it's one-handed and about the same length, it would be... It doesn't have hooky-hooky? It does have, but, it, but it, because of the range, to hook, you're, vi uh, you're in danger. You're in the danger okay. zone. Um, whereas the other hooky-hooky, they're on long pole lines where you can hook and... But what's that wacky-wacky? Yeah, yeah, but the, but, the, but, the, but the reach problem. I think that uh, if it was two-handed, maybe I could put it up a tier. Because remember, the shield is kind of, the shield. I might have gotten wrong with the sh arming sword and shield and axe and shield because it's hard to really quantify how useful the shield would be in a castle defense. Well, how use useful are the merlons? Well, now you can just move it, you know, you got... Yeah, yeah, but you could, because you have the merlons to protect you, you could rely on the merlons to protect you and use a big ranged, wacky, stabby, cookie thing to hit people and you don't need to get close up. So I'm, al I'm almost thinking of dropping these two in there. Because I just don't, I'm, I'm not convinced the shield is a game changer with those weapons. Uh, uh, so let us know what you think. Well, what, what do you feel about this um, uh, analysis? Best weapons for castle defense, where they fit on, on our list. I'd love, looking forward to reading them in the comments below. Uh, and thank you for watching. These videos are a lot of fun. Um, we try to make them both educational and entertaining as well. Uh, and we want to do more. I think um, we've done, oh. Self-defense, best medieval weapons for self-defense will be the next one. And I just, I love how, what? Did we already do that? No, we did Battlefield. It oh, switches yeah. it up, it switches up the consideration completely because self-defense, it brings in a new consideration, which is transportation, wearability. So you're just on your own? Yeah, well, yeah, and you're not wearing armor now. Self-defense, in most situations, I, that'll be a fun one to consider. I hope to see you there. Subscribe if you haven't, so you, can, so you won't miss out. And uh, until next time, well, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope to see you next time. So until then, farewell.